In his speech on March 9th, 2011, His Majesty, King Mohammed VI of Morocco, evoked the plurality of the Moroccan identity, united and rich in the diversity of its branches, and at the heart of which is Amazir, or Beberity, the shared heritage of all Moroccans. It is in the context of this recognition of Morocco's Berberity, reaffirmed in the foreword to the kingdom's new constitution, adopted in 2011, that the Fondation Jardin Majorel officially inaugurated the Berber Museum on December 3rd of the same year. Housed in a studio designed in 1931 by the architect Paul Sinoir for the French painter Jacques Majorel, the museum presents to the public the collection assembled by Pierre Berger and Yves Saint Laurent. From the reef to the Sahara, more than 600 objects show off the wealth and diversity of a Berber culture alive today. The Imaziren, singular Amazir, or Berbers, number among some of the most ancient inhabitants of North Africa. Their origins have been the subject of numerous myths, legends, and stories, and can be traced back over 9,000 years to the Proto-Mediterraneans. They have preserved their unity by maintaining their unique language and culture, which, like their land, are both African and Mediterranean. In contact with the other peoples of the Mediterranean, the Berbers created kingdoms alongside which grew up vast territories organized into powerful, democratic, warmongering tribal communities. Both aspects of this socio-political organization have left a mark on Morocco's recent history. As opposed to the pagan Mediterranean kingdoms of antiquity, and the first heterodox principalities, Berber empires were Muslim and continentally oriented. Judaism continued to be practiced, and the Sunni Islam majority gradually took on a Berber hue with its brotherhoods, zawiyas, marabouts, and rituals. The roots of the Berber culture go deep down into Morocco's distant proto-history. It is a culture characterized by an unfailing bond with the earth, a sense of community, hospitality, and commensality, and its relationship with the sacred. Its openness to many influences, be they Mediterranean, African, Oriental, European, or international, has defined its character today. The Berber language, Afro-Asian, has outlived many languages of antiquity, such as ancient Greek, Latin, Phoenician, and Egyptian, and is a true melting pot of the history and culture of the country. Once written, it is now mainly oral and is still spoken by a substantial number of Moroccans. The recent recognition of the country's barbarity would seem to signify a will to preserve the language for future generations, including its ancient alphabet called Tifinar. The exhibition is divided into four distinct sections and areas. The first room presents the history and geography of the Berbers and charts Morocco's largest tribes. A Berber woman, painted by Jacques Majorel in 1921 in Marrakesh, evokes the artist's close links with this people extensively represented in his pictorial work. The second room is devoted to the tangible and intangible craftsmanship that transforms various materials into everyday or ceremonial utensils. The diversity of artisanal creations is seen through work in wood, leather, pottery, and basket weaving. The dominant geometric designs on domestic objects for both everyday or festive use, such as ritual objects, are sometimes associated with human images. The third room, devoted to jewelry, presents a collection of jewels illustrating beliefs and knowledge accumulated over thousands of years. An expression of tribal identity and of the social status of the woman who wears them, jewels are also a form of savings, available as and when the economic fortunes of a rural society so require it. They are all the work of remarkable, often itinerant, artisan jewelers. The necklaces are created by the women, who combine amber, coral, amazonite, and silver elements depending on the style of their region. A host of different materials and symbolic shapes are imbued with medical properties. The fourth room is dedicated to Berber ceremony as seen in costumes, weapons, weavings, and so on. Berber groups throughout Morocco, whether sedentary or nomad, all exhibit a pronounced taste for finery. 
clothing, jewelry, and accessories define their identity and make up their festive costumes, whose variety can be appreciated on the occasions of large gatherings. Since it opened at the end of 2011, the museum has welcomed over 180,000 visitors, coming mostly from Europe and Morocco, but also from all over the world. Every year, the Berber Museum organizes a symposium bringing together researchers and specialists to debate contemporary issues surrounding Berber identity and heritage in Morocco and abroad. This year, the Berber Museum Symposium was placed under the patronage of UNESCO. Entitled Amazir Knowledge and Know-How, Disappearing or Adapting, it was part of the 10th anniversary celebrations of the Convention for the Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage, adopted by the organization's General Conference in October 2003. The proceedings of the symposium, called Cahier du Musée Berber, are published in both English and their original language, and are widely distributed to museums and international institutions. In 2014, the symposium will take place at the Institut du Monde Arabe in Paris, at the same time as the exhibition Berber Women of Morocco, organized by the Fondation Pierre Berger Yves Saint Laurent in Paris from March 18th to July 27th, 2014. The Berber Museum is a non-profit permanent institution. Its aims, as defined by the International Council of Museums, ICOM, of which it has been a member since 2013, are to serve society and its development, to acquire, conserve, research, communicate, and exhibit the tangible and intangible heritage of humanity and its environment for the purposes of education, study, and enjoyment.